All right, y'all absolutely love this series, so let's get into Ben 10, Hot Takes, Part 4. People overestimated brute strength aliens like Forearms and Humongousaur. Like, yeah, they're strong, but it won't it be better to manipulate time or create black holes from your own gravity? This is very true. While Waybig was pretty strong, no one really regards Clockwork or Gravitac as more powerful, and I think we gotta change that in our minds a little bit. Ultimate Alien Ben was the worst one. He was like the later two seasons of Alien Force, but slightly toned down, and for the entire show. Nope, he was the best. Julie is overrated. She was cute with Ben for the first part of Alien Force, but then the writers ruined their relationship over time. This isn't really her fault, but it still affects my views of her, especially since she's all that good as a standalone character. Her right scenes were pretty dull. The mech idea feels overused. It doesn't change anything about how I perceive her, it's just weird. I agree completely. They definitely ruined Julie after Ultimate Alien and Omniverse. Azimuth was the most likable in Omniverse. He felt a bit too stern with Ben in Ultimate Alien Force. Some of the time he deserved it, but in the Dion Alien and Agarore arcs, he just felt too much. He was pretty stern with Ben, that I agree, but that's also the entire frickin' point. If he pats Ben on the back all the time, then there's zero development. This is actually where I think Omniverse Azimuth falls short. But generally, while I like Azimuth in both Ultimate Alien Force and Omniverse, I think UAF was still much better, because he was always so stern that made moments like the end of Alien Force super deep and emotional. Because always being nice to Ben kinda cheapens the effect in my opinion. Siphon was a good villain slash character, I don't know why, he just is. I agree, being Vilgax's servant for the majority his concept is really cool. I also love his cool black and white design. The Forever Night concept was the best in the reboot. For some strange reason, I never liked them in Ultimate Alien Force or Omniverse. In Omniverse and Alien Force, they just felt like small time recurring villains. And the Dagon arc was terrible. In addition, their designs were mostly unappealing. In the reboot, the Forever Night it was one of the best villains in that show. He was pretty cool to watch. He was a bit menacing and had a noticeable impact on the characters around him, especially Kevin. Eh, I haven't seen the Forever Nights in the reboot, so I can't really say, but honestly, anything beats the boring and dull Forever Nights from Ultimate Alien Force. Honestly, even as a kid, I skipped all the night episodes because they were all super boring. Vilgax was more interesting in the reboot than Ultimate Alien Force or Omniverse. However, nothing is better than OG Vilgax. Man, nothing beats classic series Vilgi. Hot take. One of the worst aspects of Omniverse is how little a lot of the aliens appear across the 80 episode runtime. Stinkfly, Chromastone, Swampfire, Ripjaws, Lodestar, Brainstorm, Echo Echo are all examples of aliens that were barely ever used, not to mention a lot of the ones introduced later on like Gut Rod, Atom Comics and Vampire feel like completely wasted potential. But no, we gotta have another scene of Ben using forearms or Humongousaur. I actually feel like Omniverse was super meticulous in their attention to making sure every alien got decent screen time. While some were a bit underused, I agree, I feel like they did their best, especially when juggling 70 aliens around. I know Cannonball didn't appear until Season 2, but honestly I've always considered Cannonball part of the original 10, thanks to the second intro and Ghost Freak basically escaping the Omnitrix. Me too, especially when he transformed into Cannonball in War of the Worlds, it was super cool. I I've always loved Cannonball to regard him as a classic forever, plus his premiere episode was one of the best episodes of the classic series. Ultimate Big Chill never made sense, it's the same level of Ultimate Cannonball for me. I agree, like what the hell does so cold it burns even mean? Hot Take 2, I really like the Omnikix armor from the reboot. My favorite upgrade would be the Omnikix Cannonball. Eh, reboot doesn't really concern me to be honest. Hot Take 3, I really hated how Ben tends to go for heavy hitters rather than either improvising or using useless aliens to the best of their abilities. Well, that's not really true, in most filler episodes, uses weak aliens and learns how to improvise in battle. Hot Take 4, I really hated Reboot Ben's arsenal. Most of them really seem like just brawn only aliens like Wrath, Forearms, and Humongousaur. Yup, Reboot's roster is ripoffs of the old shows and the main 10 are just from the classic series. Amphibian is the most underrated and underused alien ever. Eh, he's alright. Ben always skips on epic final battles and uses BS shortcuts. See, Kevin killing Agrigor in like 2 seconds and Ben killing Dagon in 2 seconds with the sword. See, now this is one I can get behind. All of Ben's fights are always half-assed and he always wins with a two-second shortcut. I absolutely agree. Now to be fair, that means there's more time dedicated to plot building and action. But let's be honest, both Dagon's death and Vilgax's loss in Ultimate Enemy were both super rushed and boring. Miss the good old days when Ben would use all of his aliens in hopes of weakening Vilgax, who's at his most powerful in an epic location like Mount Rushmore. Hot take 1, Omniverse Azimuth is the best one because he feels like a perfect balance between the previous two. Nope, Alien Force for life. The best Alien Force aliens are Humongousaur, Big Chill, and Swampfire. Swampfire? Yes. The best Omnitrix is the recalibrated one because it never gave Ben the wrong alien until Season 3 when he and Kevin damaged it. Absolutely. There weren't enough Ultimates in Ultimate Alien? Yep. We didn't get enough Omniversal travel in Omniverse. Uh, sure. The best Vilgax is the reboot Vilgax. 
Nope. Ultimate Cannon Bolt and Wild Mutt don't look bad in my opinion. Perhaps some things should have been added. Nope, they look bad. Sorry. I prefer Ben and Rook over Ben, Gwen, and Kevin. Me too, but Kevin is honestly amazing. Maybe I'd prefer Ben and Kevin in some cases. I don't like Julie and Ben's relationship. I feel like it was doomed from the beginning. I agree. I kind of like and enjoy the mistransformations when they're not overused. Me too. Too bad they were. I feel like Ditto is one of the worst aliens to use due to his massive weakness. He could be good for puzzles, but in other situations, nah. I agree. Even for puzzles, you have Accelerate, Jury Rig, Clockwork, Grey Matter. I'm personally fine with all of the mistransformations in Season 1 of Omniverse. To me, it was a way of showing that Ben was back to square one and that he had to work his way back up again. Sure, that's fair. Harrisman is the best new alien during the Agrivore saga. Don't know why, just love him. Nope. Energy is better. Love the idea that Albedo returns with more ultimates in Omniverse. Yes, sir. Rook is the best thing that happened in Omniverse. Yep. All of Ben's romances feel forced. Yes! Everyone should at least give the multi-part episodes of Ben 10 reboot a shot. Sure. I would kill for having more Ben 10 Generator Rex crossovers. Me too. And that's Ben 10 Hot Takes Part 4. Do you want more of this series? If you do, leave some more hot takes in the comments below. And be sure to check out parts 1, 2, and 3 in the description below. With that said, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you beautiful ladies and jellyfish next time. Shalom. Shalom.